Hello everyone, welcome back to A Man, A Plan, Panama, where today we are talking about Act 2 of Episode 1, Echoes. Bungie did a live stream earlier in the week, about 30 minutes, going over a lot of the things uh, that we're going to be seeing in Act 2. I didn't make a video then because I just didn't. So I'm doing it today. So if you already are kind of up to date or maybe you watched the live stream happen, uh, you probably already know a lot of the things that I'm going to say, but I am going to give some thoughts on some things. Uh, so maybe you want to stick around for that. I don't know. The biggest thing, one of the biggest things anyway, um, was the fact that Bungie, starting in episode two, not act two, episode two, they are going to give each act's story all at once, right? So right now we have, you know, act one, part one, and then the next week happens, and then act one, part two, and then part three, and we take a break. And so the re that is not changing for episode one. Like, they're sticking with that format for the rest of episode one, and then starting in episode two, you're going to get all of act one right away, right at launch. You play the whole thing, and then you'll have to wait for act two, and then you play all of act two, and then you play all of act three. And this was because of a lot of player feedback. We're going back to the time-gated content conversations uh, that we've been having for the past however many years now. And uh, I don't I, I don't necessarily mind that they are making this shift. You know, I, this is not a, a battle that I think has a winning side, time-gated versus not time-gated. The only thing that I'm really going to say about this is that I no longer will have any sympathy for people who uh, now complain that they don't have anything to do week over week as a result of this change. My sympathy for you is now gone starting in Act 2, or sorry, in Episode 2. You're getting what you wanted, to some degree anyway. You know, if you want to complain that you can't play every single act immediately, fine. I don't think that's much of a rational take, but fine. Otherwise... I, I really don't want to hear it. I never want to hear it ever again about, oh, just burned through the entire story in one day, and now I got nothing to do. That's your fault now. That is now your fault. You are in control of your own playtimes and all that stuff. I have no more sympathy for any more of those complaints. Moving on. New Battlegrounds. I enjoy Battlegrounds. Um, so I am... Uh, Pretty excited. I was actually kind of surprised that they were going to give us another activity uh, in Act 2. I thought we were just going to be stuck with Breach Executable, which I think is an okay seasonal activity. I think it's fine, but it's nothing revolutionary. Um, I am much more of a Battlegrounds enjoyer. Uh, and during the live stream, uh, one of the designers did say that they are really pushing the limits of how many enemies they can spawn at once in some of these activities. So I am pretty excited to see what that will end up meaning uh, for this new battleground. Um, but yeah, we're getting we're getting some new battlegrounds. I think they are launching. Yeah, they're launching two uh, on the sixteenth, which is in a few days, and then another one on the following week, which cool. Um, now we have some more. Uh, weapons coming out for the season. I know I haven't done a seasonal, or sorry, episode. I haven't done an episode weapon video just yet. And that's mostly because nothing really surprised me or like excited me except for maybe the grenade launcher. Um, but I will have a weapon roll video for all of the episode one weapons on Tuesday with Act 2, mainly because of this guy right here, a Baron Action, which is a solar rocket sidearm uh, that the Bungie devs said can roll with Heel Clip and Incandescent as one of the rolls. I actually haven't looked up uh, pretty much any of the rolls on any of the weapons, really. I haven't really explored them. Um, but uh, that's a pretty potent combination. I got some questions of, like, do you think it's going to be better than, you know, the call? Or is it going to be better than Indebted Kindness or anything like that? And, I mean, as long as a Baron Action is getting incandescent, which it is, it will just be the solar version of a rocket sidearm, right? With Indebted Kindness having Volt Shot and all of the strengths that it has and how strong it is, this is just a solar version. So if you have some more solar things that you want to be doing, some solar synerg synergies that you want to be making, you're just going to rotate over to a Baron action. That's that's really about it. Um, we also have another heavy burst pulse rifle. I've been liking Nullify from the raid. 
but that's also mainly because it has Firefly Incandescent. It has a, like just like a lot of good perks. So I need to take a look at this one, but I have been liking them. You know, I don't know how like super giga meta they've been or anything like that, but I do, I do like them. And then Perfect Paradox is also coming back with some uh, perks from the original release, as well as uh, some new perks and a new origin trait, uh, Cast No Shadows. Uh, I know Perfect Paradox was a uh, was a favorite way back when. It, not, not my personal favorite. You know, I will probably scoop one up and let it rot in my vault for a little while, uh, depending on what can actually roll on this thing, but it's there if you want it. And then I think we're getting more weapons with Act 3, but my video will include the Act 3 weapons because I think they're in the API already, so don't worry about that. Artifact perks. We are getting another row at the bottom of the artifact. Um, this one is pretty much entirely sniper based. Maybe not entirely, but three out of the five are sniper. You got anti-barrier sniper rifle. Uh, we have energy cost of scavenger mods are significantly reduced, which that's that's neat. But like the problem with scavenger mods isn't really their energy cost. It's mainly like the fact that there's so much competition in the boot slot. But maybe now you can squeeze in a scavenger mod. Like, you know, you have like a three cost stat mod and like two surges or two orb perks and you can sneak in a scavenger mod, something like that. Um, solar sniper rifle precision hits scorched targets. Your ignitions do increased damage in an increased radius. So, so this is... This just applies to all ignitions, which is, I mean, GPG Hunter is about to have a blast. But this right here, everyone immediately looked, immediately looked at Still Hunt and was like, oh, great. Just what we needed. Still Hunt now causing scorches and ignitions with increased damage and increased radius. Wow. Just what it needed. We'll have something on that in a moment. Uh, and then we have Sniper's Meditation. Sniper Rifle hits Grant Stacking Sniper Rifle Damage. Stability Reload Bonuses for a short time. Heavy Ammo Sniper Rifles uh, count as more than one, uh, or one hit. Counts as more than one hit. Um, so Bungie kind of pushing snipers right now. They still haven't really you know, been, been too popular. I actually do use the supremacy on the witness in combination with microcosm. So I'm doing like double kinetic weapons so I can stack a bunch of kinetic surges. Um, and also because the thing could basically shoot forever. You're never going to have to reload. Um, but other than that, I don't really know of many places where snipers are getting a lot of attention. So this might be Bungie's way of being like, dude, we've buffed them a lot. People are still not using them. Let's give them some artifact perks and see like what happens with snipers when we give them just a ton of juice, right? Um, so you're gonna be looking at Whisper of the Worm. Dude, I might even try Darcy just for like for the memes. I don't know. I mean, obviously solar snipers, kind of nice. I think what Izume is available right now as the, uh, as the friggin' Nightfall weapon, right? I'm pretty sure that's solar. Yeah, that's solar. I know it's not the greatest archetype for it, but it's still a solar sniper and it can get fourth times precision or like clown precision, something like that. So I'm just, I'm I'm not saying, I'm just saying, right? If you want to go get something. I'm I'm interested. You know, it's been a long time since snipers have really been like super giga meta in uh in a lot of things. You know, I'm not saying you're probably breaking out Whisper of the Worm on on the witness right now if you're not too comfortable with strafing or anything like that but uh I'm, I'm interested i'm very interested so now we have some balance changes coming to the game in addition to the new weapons and artifact row we have some additional balance tuning we're working on here's some of the changes we're looking to make in early august not specifically with act two bringing swarm grenade and threaded specter in the line this is currently torturing pvp if you're not too up to date on the pvp world if you're like how is swarm grenade a problem it's all pvp related hunters are just going crazy. Increasing Twilight Arsenal and Hammer of Soul damage versus bosses and mini-bosses. I didn't even realize that this was, like, doing that badly. Like, it, it's always kind of felt okay, but also I've been maybe using, using it more as, like, a means to an end to, like, boost up my microcosm damage, so I don't know. Hammer of Soul has always felt like it could use a damage increase, personally. Um, but I think also some people were, were looking at this note and being like, wow, this is all you're doing for Prismatic Titans, Bungie? Prismatic Titan needs a, a, a much more significant deep dive. I, I don't think it's something Bungie can like really react to with like, a, oh, we'll, we'll give a consecration 10% bonus damage, like whatever. 
it needs much more systemic fixes if uh, they really want to change up how the prismatic Titan works in terms of its variety or anything like that. I'll take it. I mean, I'll take it for now. I'm, I'm using Twilight Arsenal, right? Um, armor. Kind of a big one. Signaling the end of an era. Potentially looking at some other things related to armor swapping as well. Correcting an issue that allows swapping between regular armor mods and reserve mods to enable a higher ammo count than the current maximum. This was never an intended functionality. To help offset this fix, we're buffing the following ammo-related aspects. Reserve ammo for all weapon types has been increased by 15%, with weapons with low reserves for their weapon type getting a larger buff. Reduce the cost of reserves mods uh, by one. So, here's the thing. I hate uh, armor swapping. I hate uh, any kind of, like, swapping menu gameplay in the middle of an encounter. Uh, I hate it. I personally really, really hate it. But this is a nerf to your performance when you have access to some kind of a rally. Um, I never thought this, this was an intended function, right? Like, it, it, it doesn't seem intended that you could gain the benefit of a mod f for only, like, three seconds, but have it persist throughout basically an entire encounter, right? I never thought it was an intention fun intended functionality. I just don't know why we waited this long to have this come out. Like... Obviously, it was never intended, but a lot of people are, are, I think, are going to be mad, not only because of just, like, the nerf, but because it's been in the game for as long as it has been. Although, just because it's been in the game that long doesn't ever, me doesn't ever mean that it was actually intended to be a part of the game, right? It's kind of like shatter skating or well skating. It's like, it's not intended, but it it's there. Um, although, something like that is probably a much greater fix. So, I don't know. Maybe this is, like... This was like a super hard change to make. I don't know. I don't know why they're addressing it now of all times, but it's here. The amount of times that I have forgotten to swap back to my resistances is too many to count. So like personally, I'm a big fan of this change because now I don't have to do any more stupid reserve swapping. And uh, that's gr That's good. Like I hated doing that. Um, but this is some level of a nerf for any kind of activity that uses a rally. So um, just, just be aware, I guess. Uh, moving to weapons, increasing tech's scout rifle damage by 30% in PVE. Look out for Dead Man's Tail. Look out for a lot of those, uh, tech's scout rifles. I haven't really been the hugest fan of them, even going back to the one from Spire the Watcher, which I can't remember the name of right now. I, they, they were okay, but I just, they, it's, they just don't do enough. Um, so 30% buff, pretty, uh, pretty significant. Uh, reducing flinch for snipers by 50% in PvE. Uh, again, just kind of going with the theming of Act 2, Sniper, Artifact type stuff. This makes sense. Increasing Ariana's Vow damage by 67% versus Barrier Shields. I think they said it's still going to require two shots in order to break, which doesn't really have me the most super excited about it. Like, there's plenty of things that can break in one shot or just like you have something on that it doesn't even really matter because it rips the shield off so quickly i'm guessing it's because ariana's vow like ammo counts are are very so they're trying to balance how much ammo you get with ariana's vow versus how many shots it takes to get with shield. i don't know what it is but point is they are buffing it at the very least but yeah ariana's vow just hasn't really been a huge part of the uh of the barrier breaking experience for quite a long time and then they're removing stat penalties from adept mods they just said, okay, forget it. We want people to actually use adept mods now. All right. So we mentioned Still Hunt with the artifact. One update we wanted to mention was a change we're playing for Still Hunt. We'll be reducing Still Hunt's golden gun shot damage when paired with Celestial Nighthawk by 25%. We've been monitoring the potency of the exotic. It needs an adjustment. Hunters have opportunity for some thematic tie-ins with Celestial Nighthawk. This should help reduce a bit of the damage disparity between each class and between what should be viable weapon alternatives. Whisper of the Worm has a bit more opportunity to outshine this uh, special exotic with upcoming artifact perks. Uh, you get it. So it's pretty obvious that Hunter... Golden Gun, Still Hunt, Damage. Like, their damage output was crazy. I think uh, uh, someone just soloed The Witness with this setup. Like, that's how much insane damage this setup was doing. 25% um, to the Golden Gun shot on Still Hunt in the grand scheme of the game is basically nothing. Like, they made, like, a slight 
chip of of a nerf off of the off of the marble statue that is a celestial uh, still hunt hunter. So if you're super concerned about like, no, now my damage is going to be terrible. Like, don't be. Your damage is still going to be fine. It's just like, again, it's like everyone's here and still hunt was like way up here. And now it's going to be like this. Like you're still above everybody else, right? Everyone else is still kind of here. But like now you're just like actually in frame instead of like being over here off the frame. That's about it. Solstice armor, not, uh, they're not talking about Solstice just yet, but they just have some armor previews. We got Hunter, we got Warlock, we got Titan. Titan helmet looks pretty sweet, but Solstice is still coming up. Kind of reminds me of the Intrepid Explorer armor. That was what? Season, I want to say season eight? No, that was Empyrean Cartographer. I forget when Intrepid Explorer was, but it was early, but it kind of reminds me of that. Anyway, uh, we got PvP mode. Uh, following the rules of Havoc hardware, players be focused on their weaponry, Disa uh, abilities are disabled. G given the state of, of PvP right now, is uh, this this seems pretty enticing. So, uh, I, I did like hardware when I uh, when I played it in Crucible Labs. I don't know how much I'm, I'm really going to be playing of it right now, because I'm kind of working through the Elden, Elden Ring DLC, but uh, it's there. Um, and then we have a, a collab, we have the charity. Oh, that is right. Uh, in case you are not aware, um, Bungie Day is currently happening for Bungie and they are doing uh, a charity fundraising through the Bungie Foundation um, where you can get some of the older emblems that they've done for a lot of these charity things. I think all of these emblems up here, if you donate $7, uh, you can get one of the uh, one of these emblems from the past. This package is twenty eight dollars. You get a shader and you get a ghost. And then Graphite Daydreams was an emblem and the emblem from last year, I believe. Uh, and this one I think is twenty one dollars. I think if you want to get literally everything combined, you can do a ninety eight dollar donation. I have my link in the description if you want to uh, donate to the campaign overall. I am not doing any sort of incentives though. I just very recently did a charity stream for Pride Month. So I am kind of charitied out at the moment. I'm still on cooldown. So I do encourage you to go donate to someone who maybe does have some incentives actually rolling uh, in case you want to get a little more value for your money. But if you're just like, look, I want to donate or look, I want some emblems. I want this shader. I want whatever. My link is in the description. I'm, I'll put it on the screen as well. Uh, and you can go uh, donate and raise a little money for the Bungie Foundation. Always, always good. Always good. Uh, we got Disability Pride Month. And I think this is kind of like just some art. And then, yeah, okay, yeah, we're done. All right, so there's your little preview for Act 2. I'm, I'm down. Again, like, I, I already gave my feelings on Act 1. I kind of, I like, I think, like, it's, it's kind of neat. It's pretty neat. But I also didn't really buy into, like, we're going to change the world on how we talk about uh, or how we deliver story content like I just didn't I didn't buy into that although there was a little bit of insight given during the developer gameplay preview about how switching to this model has enabled Bungie to try different things in terms of how they do their storytelling so which, which I thought was kind of neat um, so I, I would give this a watch or at least a listen if you have the time, maybe just put on like 1.5 X speed or something. Cause they did give some insights here and there, uh, as to why they are doing uh, some of the things that they are doing. Um, and it's also just fun for, I mean, at least for me anyway, to get some of these background insights and, and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's your act two preview. That's your, uh, reserves and still hunt nerf clickbait title that I probably used. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.